Today we have Louisa. How do you pronounce your second name, Louisa? Althan. Althan. Uh. I believe it, Louisa Althan. Um, and she is a, a master ascension teacher in the making. <laughs> and um, a very lovely lady too. Um, she works alongside her kind of professional partner, Anna, and they do a lot of videos from Sweden. So welcome, Louisa. Thank you so much and... <laughs> for having me. <laughs> and it's lovely to have you here because you you are such a nice presence. You know, you've got, I said actually at the um, Jackie White thing with Tim in Wales the other day, you've got such a great smile. You bring oh. such positivity. Um, so so it's my pleasure, totally. That, that was so sweet. And what a beautiful day we had. Yeah. Yeah. So well, it's the first time I'm, I, got, I got to meet you as well. Which oh, don't, was... don't worry about me. I just, I'm at the back taking photos. Oh. <laughs> um trying not to be seen and put people off but... you're bringing such a beautiful energy Toby. oh thank you thank you i'll try try it at my hardest so um you are uh, quite recently um into all of this um yeah. so you kind of got sh shaken into it which we can talk about in a minute mm -hmm. uh, you work alongside tim wilde and diana cooper quite often that's your kind of your other professional partners and they've brought a lot of good energy and events and things to sweden haven't they yeah so that that was, I'm I'm thrilled to say I brought Diana Cooper to Sweden for the first time for a for a big workshop. Yeah, back yeah in 2020. That was a week before I met Tim actually, so that was quite Thanks. interesting. Yeah, he he literally, well not even that, he literally just come back from Sweden, and um, I was helping Jackie uh, do an event at Carey's Manor, which we, he was hosting, which he was hosting, he was running. Um, it's about 120 people crammed into this room so it was like whoa this is good <laughs> all those like really 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 sort of positive nice people but very powerful people as well energetically and yeah it played havoc with my microphones then as well so oh, really yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's the energies it no, it's, the crystal, it's the crystals i think it's the crystals, crystals and the energies yeah 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 so well, we are well, like we are like big crystals when we anchor energies mm. like that so, I've done a lot of other functions though, and it, nothing's gone wrong whatsoever. And it's only the only, well, it's maybe it's you guys, <laughs> yeah. um, uh, but it's it's definitely also crystals because that's the only thing that's tangibly different in most of them. So. Really, yeah. What well, one of the things that you know when I started waking up, I think like what are, what are my gifts? What, what, yeah. what yeah, what can I bring to to this planet? Uh, one thing that I got like the first thing I got I think was that I'm an energy anchor and I thought okay I'm just here I'm just like holding ground and anchoring how boring is that <laughs> you know I want to get all these amazing yeah chatting with the all these guides and angels and everything and seeing them and hearing them and at the beginning I was just really feeling so strongly I was anchoring the energies yeah. so then I thought what how am I different from a crystal so uh, it is kind of like a crystal when we are these really huge anchors for the energies which we can do through our physical bodies yeah which the the angels cannot do so that's why we're so helpful is, <laughs> is that is that are anchored into the physical is that the water within us or something else because we're moving on to crystalline beings or something aren't we? yeah yeah and i'm i'm just hearing those as the iron is making a lot of difference too that and the electromagnetic you know properties that it yeah I've apparently got a lot of heavy metal in me. Uh, <laughs> but I, <cannot laughs> I, find quite funny. I do like a bit of Iron Maiden, so um, <laughs> um, it was, it, it's supposed to be toxic, a lot of it. So I should really yeah. be doing some fighting to get rid of it. But hey ho. So you, you're quite new to all of this, although you've yeah. been, um, in your own words, a spiritual searcher your whole life, haven't you? Um, yeah. And that's, I definitely resonate with that 100%, because I've always felt, as I probably you have, a little bit different. Uh, to yeah. everyone else and a bit of a like loner really um so and you've suddenly just come straight into it um hmm. in 2017 we had a, a traumatic loss didn't you yeah that actually that was uh in 2012 I lost my uh prematurely born twin daughters yeah and so that that and at, at that time, all at, already then, because I always believed in something. So I I, rem I remember saying to my daughter as she was passing, you know, it's okay, go to the angels. You can yeah. go to the light, you know. So having that, but then, and then I had my boys 
2013 and 2015. So I was really busy with, you know, being a mom and really, yeah. I'm, I'm saying becoming a mom, but I, of course, I was a mom from when I had my daughters, even though they didn't stay. Yeah. Uh, but uh, then searching, starting to really search. So that, that was in 20, uh, 2016, 2017. I yeah. really, so that loss is what brought me to really looking for something bigger and some answers and yeah wanting to connect with my daughters but also really feeling there's something else here for me I'm not really making a difference here on the planet there's something there's something else for me something bigger I want to make you know to help the planet in some way and I couldn't really articulate it but I think that's quite common for that quite powerful awakening um and it's already it's like it's was in it was uh, in my pain in my physical body as well. So I went to the doctors. I remember I was sitting there and I was saying, what is what is wrong with me? And saying, like, it hurts all the way into like my skeleton and my bones. Mm -hmm. And I and I realized that the doctor thinks it's just all in my head. You know, the doctor thinks I'm just nuts now at, at this point. <laughs> but it really did it really can become really physical that when there, there's a calling for something for, you know, for you to awaken, to move into something else. So it was very powerful. And then I did uh, hear of first, it was uh, Birken Tor, who's uh, doing a show on uh, Swedish television, uh, Saved by Angels. And uh, I watched the first episode because a friend of mine was in it. And uh, I was like, wow, what, what, what you have to ask the angels, you have to, you know, because you, because of free will and all of these things that you have to ask for their help for them to be able to help and so on. Like, why didn't anyone tell me this? And it was, yeah, from then, from there on, it just sort of really like an avalanche <laughs> of, of this awakening and trying to look for more information. And since uh, Birkin was a friend of Tim Wilde's, I then found out about Tim and uh, and the Ankh. Yeah, right now I'm just wearing this little Ankh, but that was the symbol that drew me in. And so that's the symbol for the fifth dimension of the heart. So, yeah. And, and then Tim's I, got one of them, hasn't he? Sorry? Tim's got one of them. Oh, yeah. He does that all the time, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, as well. I thought it was like a pagan cross, actually. So I know. <laughs> it's probably so, similar. Yeah, and it's so it's one of these symbols that we're reclaiming, like their true yeah. meaning, because with many symbols, they become kind of I don't know what I should, but it's become twisted what they actually stand for, and they've been kind of hijacked by others for some lower purposes, often, yeah. oftentimes. A bit, like, a bit like Hitler with um, whatever that was called. The was. The, the thing, the Nazi the, the, the swastika, the swastika sun. that's it, yeah. yeah. That used to be Christian, didn't it? I think originally that is much older, yeah. yeah. As well as the sun cross, yeah. yeah. So it's definitely oh, cool. in Atlantean times as well. So, but so in Atlantean times, and that was something that was like Atlantis, isn't that a fairy tale? You know, yeah. when Birkin and uh, Tim and Diana were talking about that, but yeah. As with all of these things, like you feel, feel into your heart if it because if. I could feel the authenticity of when because I then had uh, sessions with Tim Wilde. I, I connected with him and want, wanting to buy uh, Crystal Ankh, but I was so unsure and feeling like that really this imposter syndrome, you know, like what, who am I to, and you know, I'm, I'm not a light worker. I, I, I don't have any gifts, you know, but I just felt I wanted one. But so I connected with him because I wanted to ask him, you know, is it okay? That I buy one I, I'm not sure it's for me I don't want to take it from someone else who it's really supposed to be with because I'm not a light worker <laughs> and so then he was doing private sessions at that time so I, I started having sessions with him and that's how I they connected with Tim and then eventually started doing videos with him so it's like all um so at first I, I didn't know I knew I wanted to um dedicate my time I wanted to work with it the, with spirituality but I had no idea how I would do that because like I didn't feel like I was a healer or you know I wasn't like a medium or like what is what can I bring um but the first thing that came was 
wanting to explain to others, other uh, newbies, <laughs> people just awakening more uh, the basics of like about angels and because Tim as he calls it practical ascension really is saying you know take it back to the basics and I and then I came and said to him no 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 we have to make this has to be even more basic like we have to explain it on a more basic level for the newcomers so um, I created a YouTube channel to be able to do an interview with Tim and then you know from and then that's how things grow then uh, you take that first step and then I you know, you have no idea what it's going to lead to, but to follow that, um, yeah. That was Asc Ascension 101, is that right? Ascension 101, yeah. Yeah, I had that uh, YouTube series, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I remember you, you said to me about um, it's it was too complicated, and I, I the, the, someone else has said that who's quite well known recently, like 55 Steps to the Light doesn't mm -hmm. sound simple. <laughs> I've not right. read the book myself, but it doesn't sound simple to me. So actually simplifying it, that that's more for someone that's kind of done this work for some time in my opinion potentially um and you, you kind of want a stepping stone to get to that maybe a bit like way of way of mastery for example um that kind of thing you, you can't just launch straight into it i don't think because mm -hmm. it's just it just you, you end up getting there uh, you know and just yeah. yeah so that's really good you did that and you you kind of knew that had to be done to, to for people especially as a lot of people just waking up now as soon as I, it was coming. As soon as the idea came to me, because then I thought, what would I ask? You know, what would we, what would we talk about? And I just sat down. I remember at a cafe, and all the questions and the themes just, just you know, so easily came. And that's when you know that that's for you, really. Yeah. Yeah. Think, yeah. That's good. And, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, and that's what I wanted to say also. And if because I thought, what 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 is this? You know, Atlantis, and also. Um, because angels, yeah, it's quite easy, easy yeah. to accept for most people. But then uh, I remember when it was uh, these like extraterrestrials, so like the Lyran uh, masters of light, for example, or from Sirius or Andromeda. That then I really thought, oh my gosh, what what is this? But since I was having a direct communication with Tim, I could feel, you know, I felt safe in the energy of that person. Yeah. And you know, so and and then you you feel safe to feel into the feeling of it, even if it at that time sounds really strange to you. So so that's something that Tim really taught me to ask this question: What does your heart tell you? What does my heart tell me? To always fall back on on that, and not what you've previously learned, really about anything. I'm going to go into that in a minute, actually, because that's something that's um, playing with me at the moment. Mm -hmm. I know what's I, I know what is there, but there's so much other stuff externally oh. which um doesn't ring true. Oh, or, so many distractions. Doesn't ring true as as rabbit holes and stuff like that. We'll talk about that in a minute. But yeah. Um so did were you quite nervous like working with Tim um to start with or yeah, being, was, being in I front of a camera? Um, I was really nervous, yeah. yeah. At the beginning I didn't I think I, I would have said my first name, but my YouTube channel then was called 55 Steps to the Light because I okay. that book and I yeah. also created a Facebook group yeah. for other like-minded people. So yeah. I got first friends who were yeah. like-minded because I knew no one uh, who believed in anything like this. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, sorry, sorry, now, yeah, so yeah, so, so then only later did I change, did I, I remember the first time I, I said my full name, Louisa Altarn, you know, really standing in my truth as, yep. you know, who I am, because that's, but how important that is, that we do that, but you can definitely take it in steps, but to stand up for what we believe in and stand up for our truth and to speak about these things, that's becoming increasingly important, I feel, so like a really a big theme so I, I did a, an online workshop earlier this week on the 1010 we are unstoppable and that was a big part of the information coming through how important it is that we we stand in our truth we if you're working a lot of us like workers are you know we can work with energies like with your moving your body or you you have tones coming or light language but you might feel really scared to do that in public yeah. But uh, so I experienced this in uh, in in Glastonbury 
uh, at Glastonbury tour, we were a group there. And uh, so Anna, who you mentioned, Anna Indra Larson, she was really, she was like yelling, it, when we were all working together in the group and we were drumming, she was standing kind of by her, like on her own, we were around her. And uh, another member of the group heard these two young men sitting there uh, yeah, saying like teenage kids, like she's really bonkers, that one. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then some, all these other people, because they were intrigued, wondering like, what is she doing? So they, uh, they asked other members of our group, you know, what, what is she doing there? Because you can feel the energy, you feel it's something really powerful. And uh, so those two young guys there, they, they heard the explanation then, and you could see that they were really listening. Yeah. So that still, it triggers something and it like that ignites that spark for others for, and usually you get much more positive reactions than you, you would think. Yeah. That's one thing doing that. You don't even have, you can like do your thing. But so, and then of course, talking about what you believe in openly, that's another thing. But she, yeah. Anna is amazing because she doesn't <laughs> care at all, really. Yeah. really. She's so inspiring. And that's what it also, it's really inspiring for others to to there to do the same and play with it. And yeah, yeah as well. I mean, I'm, I'm finding it at the moment and I often, I'm experimenting on how how far I can, what I can say with people without them shutting down. Ah. And I've been doing it because the best time I do it, I do a lot of weddings. So I'm a wedding DJ. So I sit with photographers who are often female, but they're more they're creative people. So they have got that kind of drive in them to explore. And hmm. um, I find I just kind of just set set seeds and then they start asking questions. And um yeah, it's really interesting the conversations I've got in, and it's not it. This did not used to happen, or maybe it's because I was at a different level. I don't know. And they'd start asking about angels. Oh, I've, they've all got friends they know or people they know that have do do something like that. You know, and I mean, it, one, is, it is growing, and I mean, there yeah, are yeah. a lot of people awakening. So yeah. yeah, I mean, there was a two photographers the other day. You'd never have guessed, and I was like, um, is like, oh, I I, I kickbox with a guy. <laughs> get you guess who that is i kickbox with a guy who, who does something up to do with 5d you know i like to dip my toes in water and check out things I, it's a bit confusing for me but it's, it's quite interesting and it's mm -hmm. tim he kickboxes with tim world yeah. <laughs> and obviously tim's tim's teacher or sensei or whatever is um also does the same kind of thing um so he's actually interested and he's looked into it because he can see that's what his friends do you know um, yeah. But people are more, they, they've got more knowledge, they're more accessible to the knowledge now. Um, yeah. And I've just come back from a fishing trip. I've been talking to some hairy ass carp angler and um, that's what we call them. <laughs> they're always like, yeah, whatever. Anyway, um, they're, And he was talking about like his, his wife does spells and he's talking about ascension angels and all uh -huh. sorts of stuff. Yeah. And this this like proper geezer, uh, mm. it's the English word for I don't know, whatever um you know what i mean Giza, Giza, no, Giza. Not, not like in egypt like a proper big bloke not no okay. not Giza, no no yeah that's what they call them Giza. Giza. <laughs> like the, the kind that you'd see He's down the thinking of egypt here no, 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 no. <laughs> um yeah so it's really good and it's nice to be having these conversations actually spreading oh yeah and they they just want more and more you know yeah. i try and i'm trying to hold it back um so i don't I, I know a lot, but I don't know the theory of a lot of things. I don't, I don't go into stuff. So it's really cool, isn't it? Um, it is. Yeah. So in terms of your, you said you've kind of, not, you've had, you've been a spiritual searcher your whole life. And mm -hmm. um, what was your upbringing like? Did you have parents or people around you that were spiritual, religious or? Um... No, we were part of the Swedish state church, but you know, it's yeah. more like I sang in the choir because oh, I'm okay. the countryside in the church choir and that's the only thing that was <laughs> like that, yeah. that activity so to be able to sing in a choir it was the church choir but most people in Sweden are very they, they're not really deeply religious mm. or, or like a, well I don't know like you do the baptism and the wedding and like, like it's more more symbolic or like cultural yeah. um, heritage but uh, but no one that I knew that was really spiritual. So when I woke up in 2017, there were I didn't know anyone to 
that I could talk to who believed anything like this. So that's really difficult. I think it has been quite common. And I think it's changing now since so many more people are waking up. Mm. But it was very common to be, to feel very alone in it. But also when you're, or, or how, how do, what do you feel? Like how long have you been awake to? <laughs> I don't know. I think my whole life, to be fair. Yeah. So. But I have um, grown up with the influence of um, spirituality because my grandfather was a medium. Um, so the, uh, the awareness of that's been there. I've not seen much. I've only seen him go into trance once, maybe twice, and do a readings and stuff at home. Um, but they're still accepted in your family, then. Yeah, that's and my mum's done a lot advantage. of work, especially recent times. She's done a lot of stuff, um, Course in Miracles, uh Stuff like that. I call it neo neo um, Christianity because a lot of it's about uh, Jesus and stuff like that. It's, there's no difference, you know. It's the same. It's all the same thing. Hmm. Um, it's just a different way of looking at it. Even science, you know, or music, or you know, being part of a, any group, you know, you still hmm. share the energy, regardless of what it is, yeah. whether it's positive or negative, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. But I, I was really a searcher. I remember I was um, uh, like a pen pal because I, you know, writing letters back yeah. in back that that time we didn't have the the, the mobile phones or anything of course of course <laughs> i'm 47 so you know just yeah. thinking when that was so in the 90s um so i was a pen pal with a Hare krishna monk uh i remember and uh, and that's kind of you know so really exploring different belief systems and yeah and i think i was thinking afterwards that my because that's quite hardcore if you want to go like become a hard Krishna monk and go into that. But but my my mom was very allowing with that because uh, yeah she could have been like feeling that that was a bit scary maybe but it was it was fine. Well, I, I know several people who've got into cults without even realizing. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, and it's, there are a lot around. Um, even my own wife, you know, um, uh, maybe not so much cults but profit making. Hmm. slightly nefarious organizations let's say uh, i won't mention any names but um so it does happen so you can understand but it's so key to have especially a mother who's understanding of not only your and beliefs um you know they, they're even if i mean my mum said the other day about a- ai she, they, her friends developed an ai system which can answer any question with regards to what what's the meaning of life or anything you can ask it apparently it's using chat GTP, which I said, actually, um, what's the point in using that when you've got our own compute, highly evolved computer, biological computer system that taps straight into source? Um, why do you need AI to help you? Um, which, yeah. but she said, you're more than entitled to your opinion. But on this occasion, I disagree. And that's great, isn't it? That's really yeah. nice. Rather than um, you're wrong kind of thing, <laughs> mm-hmm. which can be devastating, especially for a child. Um which all of us are really deep down with our mm. mothers or fathers. I'm I'm thinking about now what you said about the different cults and these different mm. like more prophets or what do you I don't know what, what to call them, but that there's so much information out there, especially when you're someone who's just newly awakened, awakening up to know what to like what sources of information to yeah, what to believe in, because everything's confusing in the beginning as well. But that's really, you know, when you have someone tell you this is what yeah. it's like, this is what to believe, like this is how, you know, yeah. this is the same for everyone, then then you should start getting cautious right away. Yeah. So with like this question that, and I've heard it in workshops many times with Tim Wilde as well, when he says that, what does your heart tell you? Yeah. You know, like feel into what's your truth? Yeah. What does that feel true to, to you? You know, someone who says that, yeah, li- yeah, li- listen to listen to them. <laughs> it's a few, th- yeah. That's that's probably the biggest thing because everything's a reflection from within. So if you have to go into yourself to do that, and if you can't initially do it, you can, everyone can do it. Everyone's mm. a, a, a able. My wife, for example, I mean, she had a massive awakening on the ninth, um, and she went to Rhinefield Ornamental Drive, which is very powerful. It's near us. It's got massive sequoia trees. Mm. A bit like being in America. And um, yeah, she saw a tree that was literally apparently looked just like a dragon. It was sat there just watching her, you know, and um, she would never say stuff like that. And I, she's my wife. I trust her. You know, that's why I married her. because She's amazing. And um, according to Matt Bell, actually, she's a Palladian. 
which is cool. Um, <laughs> and yeah, she laid on a tree. She felt like a bit of a dick in her words. Um, I don't think she said that. She someone else did, but um, <laughs> and um, she had this massive awakening, like release of energy and stuff. Um, so it's, it, things that are tangible to you. Not everyone's going to believe her, but who cares? You know, you've experienced that, and that's. Yeah. So I will, there's another thing I go on, which is it tangible? Have you had experience yourself? And, you know, I've seen an angel probably or, or um, yeah. myself, literally like Ghostbusters. I'll, I'll never forget the first time I connected with Lady Gaia. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and uh, and I went to my to my osteopath to get a treatment right after that. And I knew at that time he was actually, it, it is like a kind of a, a cult, Christian cult, but he's left that since. But he, but he was still. He wouldn't put words in on what he was doing, but he was very open and really connecting yeah. with the energies back then. So, I think at that time he had started more taking, you know, started to leave that those energies uh, of the cult. I mean, and uh, is that your osteopath? Waking in. Sorry. Is that your osteopath? The cult. Yes. Yes. Yeah. My osteopath. What was the cult? Yeah. No, I don't want to name. Okay. That. Yeah. Good point. No. Yeah. <laughs> but he. Uh, and, and I remember I came to him and, and I said, you know, I, I've just met an angel, you know. And and yeah, that was the thing. He had he'd had some sort of awakening experience as well. But so it filled me up completely, that experience. Yeah. And so so beautiful and powerful. And and then I, you know, when when you can not um you know, it's like that thing, you can't make this up. Yeah. <laughs> And that you you can't deny what really happened. It's really true, and because usually we are also like doubting, right? Yeah. Until we really experience it ourselves. But that's also a test to be able to trust and believe without well, having. Yeah, evidence. there's nothing wrong with a bit of neutral bias. Right. Um, <laughs> I don't. I. I mean. I. Yeah. I've. I've heard all sorts so far, and I'm kind of like eh, not sure. Um, mm. But also connected with seeing angelic beings of different dimensions you can also feel things that you haven't ever felt in your life like i felt the complete and utter love uh, a feeling i've never had really but i don't think i probably have that at times but it's so pure you know so that's another thing um and other stuff obviously but um another thing i always look at is following the money um it's all good to have an energetic exchange with um financial rewards but sometimes some of these, and also, especially with the gurus, I mean, they're charging hundreds of thousands of pounds um, to sit there for an hour and just tap into what most of us can actually do. They just do it better and they're more showman, showmanshipy. Mm. Um, so once one such example I would actually give is sad guru. He's probably a good example. Someone like that. Um, don't know if he is an Indian guy. Um, I don't know. Yeah, know. yeah, exactly. I, I, I don't yeah. pay much attention um but I, mean, I don't know what Eckhart Tolle charges for example but you know um sometimes if you follow the money you can see the motivation and also connected to that is notoriety and fame that's one thing I look at and see the okay. change notoriety no. kind of more people knowing them and uh -huh. the draw into ego is so powerful at the moment yeah. especially it's really powerful and that is connected with money wealth and fame are very similar yeah so I often look at some and see how they've changed I see in which way they've changed, how they react with people, and, um, especially their close relationships. Um, hmm. Yeah, and other stuff. <laughs> but, 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 so one thing, because this also made me think, though, of my my ex-husband, because hmm. that's also something like when you wake up spiritually and you change quite yeah. a lot in a short period of time, yeah. you might. That's that, different. Might be, yeah, and so yeah. I've broken up from my relationship. Yeah. So I've divorced my husband and because... Yeah. Sometimes it just doesn't work anymore. Yeah. Um, but uh, it's something that he said was that, that someone who charges money for for a session, for example, or a workshop, that that that's that can't be. How is that spiritual? You know. But there. But then again, we live in a three D world. Yeah. So it's like it's not that it can. It. I, I just want to kind of counter that. Oh, it's, yeah, 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 yeah. We have to charge money for the work that we do. We have to have yeah. that energy exchange as well. Yeah, yeah. But it's it, it's when it goes, you have to kind of feel that, feel into that ag again with your heart. Like, yeah. is this is this ego now is it with this person or is it genuine? Yeah. Because that, genu that is genuine and authentic. 
and that kind of what is the drive behind them doing this because usually then when it's money it's that they you will look for what you think people want rather than what your heart and your guides like your higher self the angels are bringing through you and and kind of asking you to do what you right but to really go with and I, I'm I'm so surprised at what I've achieved that I wouldn't have never never thought so I'm not I'm not talking about you here don't worry sorry <laughs> I'm not talking about you here don't no, worry. no 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 now I'm not now I've shifted on to just yeah just that when you follow the guidance of of your heart that that you can really achieve no I wasn't thinking that you were talking about me Toby but um no because I was also thinking the first time I had a workshop with Tim a real workshop that we you really that you did pay money to come to to take part in our workshop and I was so completely focused on the like the content and what my you know what we were bringing through and and the energy and connecting with the whole group of people and then kind of shock because I had never I had not even thought about that I would get paid afterwards so <laughs> so I remember that uh because that was of course more than I usually get paid when I do my own little workshop you know but that that was really funny you said that because not on my mind at all so that they really that yeah it's but it's a beautiful thing to remember <laughs> yeah but funny you said because Jackie's literally just sent me a voice message really? and um, she sends she's, she's starting I'm, I'm gonna follow this because it's not tangible yet but she's she, I was at Diana Cooper's house the other day doing photos with her and she'd never rung me in her, in her life but she rang me then so she's just no, messaged me when you when you were sort of talking Aww. about the day that we had with her so if, I'm going to keep an eye on that and that's another thing actually the synchronicities as well that yeah. are happening um when you not only when you pay attention to it because it's not confirmation bias it's beyond probability sometimes when things happen on a regular basis yeah. uh, and that's another thing I think which is really quite in, quite interesting isn't it Do yeah you know? oh yeah oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some, one of the first things that you know that you hear people talking about when you wake up all the synchronicities and like and yeah. seeing that's the same yeah <laughs> so yeah. now it's 1 44 here and i'm looking at the time now mm. here in sweden the time is 1 44 and 1 4 4 like that number is pretty, <laughs> pretty special one uh in these circles uh so yeah like numbers or just like you like you're saying someone contacting you because we have of course, a connection yeah. through Jackie, you and I, we met through yeah. Jackie. Yeah. That's interesting. Yeah. Or, um, or songs playing with the, the lyrics that they have, like, like so much, or just, uh, you know, images that you see, like on a bus passing by. I remember, because like, everything, yeah. when I woke up, everything was about lions. Right. Not lyrans, uh, in from Lyra, but lions, the animal lion. Mm, yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I saw it everywhere. Okay, okay, so there's like an advertisement, there's a lion in it. And I saw a flower, and I, like this yellow flower, and I just, I have to look up the name of the flower. You know, just this feeling, I had to do that. It was called something with lion. Yeah. And, and music playing, you have the the lion sleeps tonight, for example, is one. Yeah. There are, and so there was, and I couldn't believe it, but that was really to help me with courage also. Yeah. Uh, the lions. And then I remember the first session I did have with Tim Wilde, and I told told him of everything about the lions, and he said, mm. "Oh, I feel a connection with the lyrans with you." So that was then Lyra. What's lyrans? Is that the planet? Lyrans. So they're actually they're like star lions. They have right. the, have this leonine uh, presence, like these um, yeah star beings from okay. Lyra. Uh, so and then I do have a very strong connection with Lyra, but that's when I I couldn't understand what he was saying and. So that was also quite funny because he thought I didn't understand English well. So he he said, I will speak slower. And and then I no, but what can you spell it for me? And I was, you know, I must have looked completely like Lyra, he's talking about a star constellation, you know. Because then I, I was completely unfamiliar with working with star beings. <laughs> yeah. Then again, I I I trusted his energy. Otherwise, I would have completely not, I wouldn't have that, it wouldn't have ignited that spark in me that it did, that he started talking about star beings. So, and that, that's kind of the good thing about being um, in all of this, because a lot of the people that come to your events will, will sense that authenticity 
um they'll know if you're talking rubbish like um i mean i've seen people and you can tell that they're just putting it on just the emotion oh. stuff um and other you know other people don't um or yeah so it's kind of that that's another good thing going back yeah. to that but um so yeah no, no, actually do you think everything's connected isn't it and that, i found that quite hard to kind of comprehend um even stuff on tv and films and actually when i look back on it i'm going to do i might even write a book on it at some point um all the things that have been in tv and films are actually coming true now um and i'm i'm starting to think there's a lot more than just this no offense to you but um it's if this is a simulation of some sort there's traps every level you get to you've still got free will i don't feel it's nefarious um in any way like dodgy um but there's traps to the and, and i think you can create manifest obviously i mean it's in all the old stuff you can manifest any reality you want uh, which is quite interesting uh, but i did a little um google well google duck duck go search on the galactic council mm -hmm. so everyone's talking about metatron um mm -hmm. especially with the diana sort of people it's all metatron um i, I found I, I all i got was um marvel stuff and then star yeah, Wars, I mean, you can... star trek um transformers i mean and one of the transformers is don't, one don't go searching on, on the internet it's one letter removed from Megatron. I know, I know, I know. Um, and I was thinking, like, Metatron sat there and upstairs re reading his newspaper, and then the messenger comes in and says, uh, "Diana's got someone else for you." Oh, for God's sake! <sighs> like, I know Jesus is pretty busy because you've got a lot of confused Christians right now, but the trilogy, there's three of them for Christ's sake. <laughs> it's English humor, maybe. Um, Buddha, you just sit there eating biscuits. Get your ass up. <laughs> so what, what's so special about Metatron? Because I noticed something with yeah. that. It's, it's you, and that's within, isn't it? Is that right? I haven't had time to research it. My connection with Metatron? Yeah. If you're asking that? Yeah, yeah. In yeah. general, though, yeah. If you could explain it. I mean, yeah, he he stepped in as a main guide for me yeah. at the beginning of my awakening, yeah. So at first, it was the first one I connected with 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 was Archangel Michael. I think that's quite common. I feel like that, yeah. that blue, feeling really protective, this blue light. Yeah. Uh, but then it was Metatron. And he's really been um, challenging me a lot to do the, all these things, he's helping me so much. But he is like the, uh, now is saying the grand orchestrator. Yeah. <laughs> but he's kind of in charge of the ascension process yeah. here on Earth right now. So he is very much leading and uh, they're, they're all there, but he has a very leading role in that. So the wars came tumbling down.